the White House is more than just an office for the president. This iconic building serves as a home, office, museum, and stage. As an office and a stage, the White House hosts many important events. As the chief diplomat, the president honors visiting governments with diplomatic events. The most notable of these is the state dinner. State dinners began as a way to honor members of Congress, members of the president's cabinet, other government representatives, or visiting foreign officials. These early dinners were a local affair and an important part of the Washington, D.C. social scene. The first state dinner to honor a foreign leader was hosted by President Ulysses S. Grant and First Lady Julia Grant on December 22, 1874, when they welcomed King Kalakoa of the Kingdom of Hawaii, then an independent nation. The King of Hawaii had traveled to Washington, D.C. to discuss trade terms with President Grant at the dinner itself, the finest dinnerware graced the tables. Beautiful flower arrangements and accompanying music from the United States Marine Band set the mood. The dinner was a media sensation and said to be brilliant beyond all precedent. It was this dinner that ended up serving as the model for future state dinners. Partly due to his large young family needing more space and partly due to the rapid growth of the United States as a world power, President Theodore Roosevelt commissioned a massive renovation of the White House in 1902. In addition to adding more office space, including what became the modern West Wing, the state dining room was upgraded and expanded. The renovated White House was now the perfect stage for diplomatic events and entertainment and helped foster the growth of state dinners into the crucial diplomatic events they are today. During World War II, President Franklin D. Roosevelt used state dinners to cement wartime alliances and ensured that these events were carefully planned to welcome and celebrate the guests of honor. In the post-war period, until the fall of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, dubbed the Cold War era, state dinners served as an opportunity to showcase the American way of life or opportunities to warm relations with foreign rivals. State dinners are the core event of what is known as a state visit. A visiting head of state will come to the White House in an official arrival ceremony, typically on the south lawn of the White House. After being welcomed by the president, the two leaders then spend the day in diplomatic discussions with a break before the official dinner. When the visiting guests return to the White House for the state dinner, they spend time on the second floor of the White House with the president and first lady, talking and exchanging official gifts. The show truly begins when the President and First Lady descend the grand staircase in the entrance hall with their guests, as the Marine Band, a longtime fixture of state dinners and official White House events, plays hail to the Chief and the anthem of the visiting nation. The guests are received by the President, First Lady, and visiting Head of State before going to their carefully arranged seats in the state dining room. Though the state dining room is built for these official dinners, not all state dinners take place in the state dining room itself. Depending on the size of the dinner, guests involved, and time of year, state dinners may extend beyond the state dining room or be held outdoors, either in the open air of the White House grounds or in specially designed pavilions. During the dinner, the president and visiting head of state will each offer a toast. The toasts often will include personal or historic stories, but also reflect how well the state visit and diplomatic talks have gone. The evening continues with entertainment after dinner, usually performances of some kind, dance, theater, or music, often in the East Room. Of course, before the event itself, there are months of planning. The First Lady, with the help of the White House Social Secretary, the Chief Usher, and the U.S. State Department, will work to ensure that every little component of a state dinner is welcoming to foreign guests. Seating arrangements, floral arrangements, music, and most importantly, the menu are all very carefully crafted. The food served at a state dinner establishes the tone of the evening. The social secretary and White House chefs coordinate the menu with input from the president, first lady, and the state department. Since one of the state dinner's purposes is to demonstrate hospitality to the guest of honor, it is essential to serve a meal that they will appreciate. 
the chefs will frequently prepare a particular dish that the visiting head of state is known to enjoy or wishes to try. One such example is the 1979 state dinner honoring Prime Minister Masayoshi Ohira of Japan. White House Social Secretary Gretchen Poston learned that Prime Minister Ohira wished to try American barbecue, so suckling pig and buffalo meat were slow roasted atop the West Terrace of the White House. The dessert is often the highlight of the meal, the final dish to impress the guests. Legendary former White House pastry chef Roland Mesnier famously never made the same dessert twice and has been celebrated globally for the ingenuity of his complex, artistic, and meaningful desserts. The evolution of state dinners in their scope and sophistication mirrors the growth of the United States as a world power and the importance of the American presidency. A state dinner is the opportunity for the president to shine in their role as chief diplomat, but furthermore, it is the symbolism and legacy of the White House itself that brings so much power to these events.